Sometimes when horse people travel, they have to pack some emotional baggage. In this episode of Barn Stories, we learn how difficult that can be. Welcome to the Barn Stories podcast. I'm Lori Prince, editor of Equus Magazine. And I'm managing editor Christine Barakat. This podcast features our favorite essays and articles published in Equus over the past 40 years. Although Equus is known for articles on horse care and veterinary research, our editorial mission has always been guided by the bond that exists between horses and people. And each issue has featured a real life story that celebrates how horses enrich our lives and touch our hearts. We searched our archives, chosen the stories that resonated with our readers, and given them new life in this audio format. Longtime subscribers may recognize some of their favorite pieces. And if you're new to the Equus community, these stories will confirm that no matter what sort of saddle you sit in, a deep emotional connection to horses is something we all share. Leaving town when you keep horses at home can be a logistical challenge. There are lots of people who will come to your house and feed your cat every day, but finding someone qualified to take care of an entire farm can be like searching for a hoof pick in a hayfield. Even when you've figured out the logistics, there are emotional considerations. Most horse owners are going to worry, at least a little, when they have to be away from home for more than a day or two. Some owners, like the author of this essay, worry a lot. I used to do a lot of farm sitting when I was in college. I'm not sure I appreciated how difficult it was for people to leave horses, not to mention entire farms, in the hands of someone else. I'm sure at the time I wondered what they could possibly be worried about. But now, being older, wiser, and more empathetic, I get it. And now that I've listened to this essay, I hope the people I farm sat for had experiences similar to the author. Specifically, that knowing their horses were in good hands back home helped them enjoy their time away while appreciating even more what they'd be returning to. So let's listen to She's Leaving Home, written by Heidi Furseth and read by Taylor Autumn. A local TV channel runs a question of the day segment on their afternoon news. The questions are vague and deliberately misleading, usually referring to some poll. For example, three out of four wives wish their husbands would do this more. The anchors and viewers are invited to guess the answer, and they usually are comically wide of the mark. The correct response to that question was, hold hands. I never get it right either. That is, I didn't until they ran this one. Question. 25% of people never go on vacation because of this. The most common guesses were, can't afford it and can't get time off work. But I knew the answer instantly. No one to take care of the pets. Substitute horses for pets? For me, they're synonymous. And you get a picture of my life. I never go on vacations. Oh, I take time off from my paying job as often as I can, but my vacations are staycations filled with chores like fixing fences and putting up hay. The feed store is about as far from home as I get. I'm not complaining. I love everything about horses. And obsessing over their care is just as important to me as nailing that flying change. But let's admit it. Horsework is exhausting. Keeping horses is like being the parent of perpetual toddlers. There's no sleeping in, and early risings never result in early bedtimes. There's always one last blanket to check, or a final visit to make sure his nib's pouty look at dinner time was discussed over his low-carb hay and not impending colic. The same conditions that make me want to hit the snooze button or go to bed early with a good book. The dark the cold, the wet, are the very reasons I find myself out in the elements, taking care of the horses. I do all this because I love them. But I admit there are mornings I groan and wish I could wake up on my own and not to the sound of the barn being torn to pieces by hungry horses. And sometimes, on really frigid mornings, I fantasize about sending them away to a boarding school and letting someone else get the frostbite. But when push comes to shove, I can't imagine someone else taking care of my horses. Who else would understand that the ponies I'm hungry pawing is different than I have a tummy ache pawing? Who else is going to scrutinize every misstep to distinguish between a brewing abscess 
and ordinary clumsiness. Only I know which horse needs hours of uninterrupted quiet to finish her breakfast, and who needs a big old rock in his manger to slow him down. To me, to be a horseman is to be a professional warrior, and I am very good at it. The sound of a whinny tumbles me out of bed. This, of course, caused some problems when his nibs took to neighing at midnight just for the entertainment of watching me run outside in my nightgown. I've been known to leave work to pull blankets on an unexpectedly sunny day or throw on sheets when a squall blows through. Now, who else is going to do that? No, I have pretty much convinced myself that no one else could take care of my horses. Going away on holiday was out of the question. What finally forced me to leave home wasn't a vacation, but a new job, or more specifically, new job training. Three weeks clear across the country. Knowing I would have to be away from home for 21 days caused some serious second thoughts. But I took the job anyway, telling myself I would deal with that later. And then, suddenly, the time came. Today's episode is brought to you by Enjoy Yum's Horse and Dog Treats, manufactured by Jax. Enjoy Yum's treats come in three flavors, apple, carrot, and mint. They are made right here in the U.S. of A. and consist of only six natural human-grade ingredients. Being veterinarian-inspired, Enjoy Yum's do not contain any wheat, soy, corn, or added sugar. Enjoy Yum's horse and dog treats are safe for all animals, goats and sheep included. It's what's inside the bag that counts. Choose Enjoy Yum's horse and dog treats to keep your pets happy and healthy. I panicked. Who was I going to get to take care of my horses? It's no problem to have a friend stop by and feed the cat and play a little laser tag or send the dog to a sibling's house for an extended play date with her cousins. But horses are a different story. Three weeks of that kind of hard, exacting work was too big a favor to ask even the best of friends. I had a few offers, but one person's idea of care was to throw hay over the fence once a day. And another girl I suspected might feed them dinners of apples and sugar cubes and paint their hooves pink. Finally, I decided to pay a friend and her daughter to be me for three weeks. They're both experienced horsewomen who knew the quirks of my horses and, more important, they know how crazy uptight their owner is. It was a big task, handling me, I mean, not the horses. But they were up to it. And it's a good thing, too, because crazy uptight I got. A month before I was supposed to leave, I started to stock up on hay and grain like I was preparing for Armageddon. Supplements and meds were pre-measured and meticulously labeled. I rearranged the tack room, checked fences obsessively, stocked up the first aid kit, and scrubbed every bucket, trough, and manger. I wrote up an insanely detailed and frankly insulting set of instructions that ended up being longer than most novels. I'm no technophile, but suddenly I was embracing the latest technology like a teenager, installing a security system, which baffled the installer when I insisted the cameras be pointed at the barn, not the house, and buying a smartphone so that I could log on from anywhere and watch my horses. After driving myself and everyone else up a wall, I was finally dragged kicking and screaming onto the plane, where suddenly I relaxed. I had done all I could for my horses, and now there was nothing to do but embrace my freedom. The next morning in the hotel, I slept in till 7 a.m., read the paper in bed, then showered without worrying about getting dirty all over again. And when class was done for the day... I was free, truly free. No rushing home to feed, no manure. With only myself to take care of, I did what I wanted. I explored, I stayed out late. I read an entire non-horse book, sitting in the park even. It was a giddy feeling to be so footloose and fancy free. 
but after a few days, I found myself getting restless. My life seemed to lack a center, an anchor to the hours of my days. I miss the early morning wickers and the satisfaction of putting everyone to bed at night, safe and sound. Oh, I knew things at home were fine. My friends sent me constant updates, and I could always check the horses on the cameras. But watching them and not being able to touch them became a form of torture. I time away only reinforced what I knew on a cellular level. Horses were in my blood. The last day of class finally arrived. My head was so full of thoughts of home, it's a minor miracle I passed my final exam. The return flight seemed to take forever, and when I finally pulled into my driveway, it was past midnight and pouring rain. But still in my suit and high heels, I rushed out to see the horses. I wish I could say they were overjoyed to see me, but alas, they seem more interested in the prospect of getting a midnight snack. His nibs did present his butt to be scratched, but other than that, it was business as usual. Listening to them munch their hay, I realized that the separation had been traumatic only for me, and I wouldn't want it any other way. Since coming home, I find that horse work doesn't feel like such a burden anymore. Now when the alarm goes off in the morning, I don't groan quite so loud, and I find myself lingering a little longer in the barn just to listen to the horses eat. I won't go so far as to say that I suddenly find picking manure to be a privilege, but there is something about the endless poop parade that centers me, the very inevitability of it, giving me a sense of stability the rest of the world sorely lacks. The weather turns crazy, the stock market is wilder than a two-year-old on a windy day, jobs come and go and go again but my horses are always there. Hungry, pooping, waiting for a scratch. There's a kind of security in that that I wouldn't trade for all the beaches in Hawaii. Which leads me to pose my own question of the day. At what one place would nine out of 10 horse owners rather be than on vacation? Thanks for listening to Barn Stories. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have a favorite article or essay from the Equus Archives that you'd like us to feature in a future podcast, let us know. You can reach us at Equus Barn Stories, all one word, at gmail.com. Did you enjoy this episode of Barn Stories? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening. The Barn Stories podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of the Equine Network.